welcome to the sixth tutorial in our um, uh, beginner side scroller go dot series. Um, so in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, organizing the project some more. We're going to be making things work better than how they worked before. More like organizing and just making it easier for us to read and see the code and stuff like that. So that's basically what we're doing in this tutorial. So what I'm going to start off with is our signals. So I'm going to open our player. I kind of went over this in the last video, how I had like separate signals like create bullet, even though it all just needed, it just needed to be an instance node signal because you're just checking for the node you want to instance the location. They're literally exactly the same. They're just renamed to different um, signals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to call it to instance node. And we're going to change it to, instead of the bullet is the argument, we're doing node and location. And we need to change this in a couple of places. So when we create the bullet, we want to set the bullet. Actually, you don't need to change that. And we don't need to, we just need to, we need to change it in the mit signals. Because now this is a different name of the signal. So just uh, change those and we should be good. Um, go back to the world. I'd save the player first, and then I'd go back to the world. Now, we're going to have to fix this. <laughs> um, here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go back to the world. I'm going to go to our player. I'm going to connect instance node, connect that with the world, and create a new method. Make sure make function is on. Don't rename this at all. We're just going to have it set to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this code because it's literally the exact same thing. We're just creating the object and saying it to the location and adding it as a child. But instead, we're going to be doing node.instance and we're going to call it um, node instance. And I'm just going to copy this, control V, control V. So now we're checking, yeah, we're just basically creating it through the signal of our instance node, which is literally the exact same thing as all of these. And since we fixed the player create bullet, we don't need this function anymore. Now we just need to fix these two um, signals. So I'm going to go to my create enemy destroy particles, which is in our enemy one. Go to our enemy one dot script, gd script. I'm going to go, let's see signal right here we're going to change this signal to instance node make sure it's the exact same as the other signal and we're going to set it to node and the location we'll probably have to reconnect these two i don't know you might not i'm not sure about the reconnecting i probably am going to have to so just set the emit signal to the um, to the instance node signal again there and we have one more signal that we need to do so we can remove that enemy generator that create enemy so I'm going to save this go our enemy generator and we're going to do instead of create enemy instance node the node we want to instance and the location I want to change this to instance node. Oh, there we go. Instance node. And we'll save this. And we can remove this. Oh, I see. I see the issue. So, what we did is once we connected the player instance node to it, it said on player instance node. We don't want that remove the on player because it's going to be universal to like literally everything in the game so i'm going to save this and select our player and hit node if that wants to work and i'm going to disconnect the instance node signal select it again connect we're connecting it to the world but you don't want to do on underscore player underscore instance node we just want to do instance node 
which is what we call it in the script. And if you have like any, um, if you didn't type this correctly or you use, well, yeah, if you didn't type this correctly or you use different things, it will cause issues in your game. So just make sure that you type this all correctly and you should be good. And with our enemy generator, we'll reconnect instance node to our world. We don't want to do enemy generator instance node, we just want to do an instance node. Don't do make a function, make sure that's off. We don't need extra functions in there. Yeah, okay. Now we can play it. I think everything should just work just fine creating stuff. Our bullets work. Ooh, we're getting errors though. Our enemies aren't getting destroyed properly. The player is working though. So it looks like we're getting errors. An object spray attempts to connect non existent signal. Create enemy, destroy particles. Okay, so this is where we connect it to global.world. Okay. So we want to connect instance signal. I mean, instance node, not signal. Instance node, and we want to set the function name to instance node because we called it like the exact same thing to make it easier to remember so now we shouldn't have any errors if you're having errors i would go i would suggest going back through this part and um making sure you um typed in everything correctly <coughs> okay so now we're gonna start doing we're gonna start organizing everything down here which means these preload things are gonna have to change because they're gonna be in different folders. So I'm gonna make a new folder. We call it player. Everything to do with that like links directly to the player will be in this player folder. So we're gonna put our player sprite. I'm just gonna right click it and press move to player move. Okay. Then we want to do player.gd. We want to do um, move to player player.scene um, move to player. Um, the player bullets. I'm probably going to put them in a separate folder, like a bullet folder or something. So we're not really going to put those there. I will put the player at destroy particles there because the reason why I'm not playing the bullets with the um, player folder is because we're probably going to have separate bullets. We might, I'm not sure. Um, I'm probably going to build it in such a way that it'll be easy for you guys to add um, content and it'll be pretty, should pre be pretty straightforward. So I'm moving the player destroy particles dot scene to the player. And it looks like we have, I think, about everything to do with the player in there. So now they're all in here. But now, um, you can see it created a separate tab of all the old code from our player. Even though it's the same as this code. Because it's moved and it doesn't know that this exists anymore. So you can press close. And it'll be just fine. It'll still be safe. Because you're it'll find your player.gd script that you moved. Okay, so bullet particles these should actually be the same. I don't think we need to change anything on our preloading. So I'm going to close out on that um, folder. We're going to make another one. I'm going to call this folder bullets. I'll just call it bullet for now. Actually, I'll call it player bullet. Because we, we're probably going to have enemy shootout bullets too. So we kind of want to change the names to reflect that. I'll probably rename that bullet.gd script later. Play bullet.png gd script is going in there. Um, what else do we have? Let's see. Where's our player bullet scene? Oh, it's right there. Oh, huh. we have our bullet.gd script from our other I. For some reason, I had two bullet scripts. I'm not sure why. This one was not used at all. 
So I can delete that, that will be just fine. Because I never used that for some reason. I think I accidentally created two scripts. Um, I do need to move the player bullet.gd. I don't know how that happened. I might have worked on the project without like knowing I was. Like I usually duplicate the project and then work on that separate copy, but I might have worked on this one. Or I might have caused an issue in one of my tutorials. I'm hoping that's not the case though. Okay, so we have our player bullet folder. Now we're gonna have an enemy folder. I'm just gonna call the folder enemy one. We'll have multiple enemy folders within an enemy folder for each of the different enemies. But for right now, we'll have enemy one in here. And enemy one is basically the most basic like enemy mechanic in our game. It just moves towards the player, and it'll hurt the player if the player touches it, which is the basic. It's basically the basis of every ship that's gonna be in the game. Um, so that's why we created, we set that as the enemy at the start, because we're going to go off of enemy one for every enemy that we make in the game. Now I'm probably not going to make very much enemies just for like the sake of tutorial time, but I'm probably going to try to make it as um, simple as possible and make another enemy so you guys can start adding your own content into it. Um... I don't know if I should put the enemy destroy particles in there because we're going to have multiple enemies. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'll figure out where I'm going to put that first. Okay, we're going to make an enemy generator folder. Generator. Okay, enemy generator.gd script. We'll drag that in there. And enemy generator dot scene. We'll add that there. And you know what? I'll just make a particles folder. That should work. Particles. And we will put our destroy particles. Where's your particles folder? Right there, yeah. Or enemy destroy particles in our particles folder. And we're going to make a world folder. And we could delete the icon.png. We don't really need that in our project. So just remove that. We don't really need it. Um, and I'm probably going to make a folder called like... Oh, I'll call it game managers and I'm putting our global.gd script in here. The reason why I'm putting global into a game manager folder is we're probably going to have multiple nodes that like manage the game directly, but global is going to be the, one of the biggest ones. Um, and we might be able to make our own resources and then set them as the part of the engine so we can actually kind of make our own engine for the game to make it easier to add more content. So you can see that we have a couple of these blank tabs that we could just close. We don't need any more. Okay. So you can see our editor is getting really mad at us because we're moving lots of stuff around. And so I'm gonna run it and we'll see which errors we get so we can, yeah. There we go. The game didn't even have to start to get errors. Because preload, always loads the stuff before the game starts. So that's why some games on Gildot will take um, longer than others to start because it's preloading a lot more stuff. And if you want to do like, if your game has lots of stuff, you can do a normal load feature that happens in the node. So you can have like a loading screen at a certain set point in the game. So it doesn't load the entire game right when the game started. Okay. So let's see, player bullet the TSCN error loading. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our player, find our player bullet the TSCN. Oh, it's not in our player. I forgot. <laughs> it's in our um, player bullet. And I'm gonna select the player bullet the TSCN, copy that file path, 
I'm going to paste that right here. Okay, now we need to find the particles. So go to particles, destroy particles. Make sure these are all TSCN files so you don't get, like, so you're not, like, trying to preload a script. And paste that in here. So now we have the correct scripts um, preloaded. File in use. Oh, it's if you have the game running and you try to save, it doesn't work. So just press stop and then you can save. That's why you get those errors if you're trying to save and it won't let you. Can't preload re pre pre blah, blah, blah. I can't read. Can't preload resource uh, path enemy one. Okay, because we put the enemy one in its own folder. Oh, I didn't mean to save it. See, I keep leaving it running. <laughs> Control V. Okay, there we go. So just copy the enemy one path, not TSCN, paste that in there. That's basically what we're doing lots of times and there's gonna be more errors i'm just trying to find them also because i'm too lazy to look manually go look through them all enemy destroy particles where's that not enemy there we go it's right there it's right in my face i need to <laughs> copy that file path of the destroy particles paste that in here And we're gonna save again. And it's mad at me because I haven't closed it yet. It always like it minimizes the window when it gets an error, and so I keep thinking it closed itself. Oh, looks like we're we're, we're running. And boom, the game runs, and we're not restarting for some reason. Ooh, um. I think in the player, I put the enemy destroy particles. Yes, that's our issue. We need to put in the player destroy particles. Not our enemy. I don't know why we put our player destroy particles in our player folder. So before I actually copy the path, I want to move this to our particles folder. So I'm just going to move that. Bloop. And our particles destroy that GD script. So that'll all be in there. So I'm gonna copy our player destroy particles folder into our player. Because what was happening is it didn't restart because I was playing the enemy destroy particles instead of the player and the enemy just destroys itself, the particles, but the players restarts the game. So we weren't able to restart the game because the player's particles were not created. So now it should work. Boom. Okay. <coughs> so now we have a lot, of, like a lot of things, like organized in the game. Um. We're looking pretty good right now. So, um, next tutorial. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna go over um what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do player health. So the player has like a health bar and when the enemies hit it it'll like lose health. So um thanks for watching this video. I I hope you guys like this content.